The Huskies were getting ready for a tough road matchup against number 7 Notre Dame, and it didn't help that we were coming off of a week 1 loss 38-35 to FCS Midwest at home. Despite the loss, our junior quarterback Ethan Hampton played great as he threw for over 230 yards and 4 touchdowns. Our offensive leader Ontario Brown rushed for almost 150 yards and 1 touchdown, and perhaps the biggest bright spot was freshman redshirt receiver Kyle Thomas who's shown he has a future bright spot in this offense for us. But our defense did not play well at all as we gave up over 420 passing yards to FCS Midwest And that was something that was gonna have to change if we wanted any chance against the fighting Irish today Notre Dame was off to a hot start as they'd pick up a first down on the very first play And surprisingly we had them to a third down but wouldn't be able to get the stop Our defense wasn't looking that bad to start the game against the Irish but would quickly give up a touchdown So now it was time to see what our offense looked like against the number seven team in the nation we would have our first third down of the game and it would be a handoff to Ontario Brown who would pick up a good chunk as we had a chance to make it across midfield on our first drive but we would fail to do so as Notre Dame would take back over and they were driving deep inside the red zone but we would thankfully come up with a stop and force a field goal so it was only a 10 point game headed into the second quarter as we would face a third and 21 and to absolutely no one's surprise we weren't able to pick it up and Notre Dame would pick up their third down here that would keep this drive drive alive for the Fighting Irish and that would be bad for us as they would complete this pass and take it into the end zone. And we were now down 17 nothing with just over 4 minutes to go in the first half. We were hoping to see if Ethan Hampton could at least help us get some points on the board before halftime. And it looked like the junior quarterback was finally starting to settle in with his nerves today. We were inside the 10 and would hand it off to Ontario Brown for a touchdown. But now we needed to hold Notre Dame and stop them from scoring before halftime. We would do just that as on 2nd and 10, Ethan Hampton would go across the middle and he would find Grayson Barnes' his tight end who would take this to the house for a touchdown. And just like that, we were only down by 3 points to the number 7 team in the nation and I was really happy with how the first half has gone so far. Well, the first half went really well for us, the second half was not off to a great start as Ethan Hampton would throw a pick 6 to start the 3rd quarter against Notre Dame. And that fantastic play by Jalen Sneed had got this fighting Irish crowd back into to this game for their team. That was one of the reasons I think we started doing so well at the end of the first half, was that we had done a good job of taking the crowd out of this game, but combine that pick six with that big fourth down stop that Notre Dame just picked up and this big play right here, and their crowd was right back in this game, making it very hard for us to do anything at all. The Irish would jump out to a 31-14 lead here with less than a minute to go in the third quarter, but Ethan Hampton in the offense were driving here as on third and six, that would be knocked incomplete. So we would have to send a field goal unit out for a field goal, but there would be a flag, and it would be roughing the kicker against the Notre Dame defense. So we would have one more shot here on fourth and goal as we'd get the touchdown. And we had brought it back to only a 10-point game here against Notre Dame, but things weren't going our way as they would slip three tackles on this play for another touchdown. And we didn't have much time left to work with if we wanted any chance of making a comeback today. Third and three inside the 10-yard line, and it would be a hand off to Ontario Brown who would fight his way forward inside the five and on third and goal we'd go with the read option but Ethan Hampton would make the wrong read and that would set us up with another fourth and goal on the play action rolling to his right he would find Grayson Barnes as that touchdown would only put us down by 10 and we would need a stop against Notre Dame but they would pick up the first down as that would allow them to run out the rest of the clock here in South Bend and even though this was an expected loss for us it still kind of hurt despite his one pick six Ethan Hampton had a great day surprisingly on the road throwing for almost 300 yards and 70% completion percentage and for the second week in a row Ontario Brown put up over 100 yards on the ground for us while our pass defense wasn't great today for some reason it was a lot better against number seven Notre Dame than it was against FCS Midwest and despite the loss we would get our first commit in one star punter KJ Stark. this next matchup at home against Buffalo was going to be a big one for us because we had our potential future quarterback Nick Yeast on a visit here in DeKel, as well as our second prospect on our board, three-star receiver DeMarco Vernon. I know it's early in the season, but I feel like it would be a dagger if we lost today, as starting the season 0-3 and, and losing our first conference game would be brutal. Thankfully, we seem to be off to a hot start on our first drive of the game today, as we had gotten all the way down to the Buffalo 15-yard line, but would be just short of the first down, so we would send out the field goal unit, but we would miss the kick left. And senior quarterback CJ Ogbonna was going to be a tough matchup for us 
us to stop today as he was the top dual threat quarterback in the conference. Already on just the second play with the ball in his hands, he was showing the damages he could do as he would have wide open running room in front of him. And it would not take long at all for the Buffalo Bulls offense to find their way inside the red zone and into the end zone. As after that missed field goal, we had now started the game down 7 to nothing to them. Thankfully, we would find ourselves right back in this game as Ethan Hampton would find sophomore Jalen Johnson who would take this one to the house. And it was now tied back up at 7 apiece and we would get a stop against Ogbonna and the Bulls offense. That meant we had a chance to take the lead back over Buffalo here in the second quarter and Ethan Hampton would go right to work as he would connect with his tight end down inside the 5 yard line. And on first and goal play action to Brown and Hampton would find him in the flats for a touchdown. But our kicking struggles would continue. That missed extra point now meant that if Buffalo scored a touchdown they could take the lead by making an extra point. That might be the case here too if we couldn't get a stop on third down as we would give up a third and eight conversion to the Bulls. And they would be facing another third and seven and on the halfback draw they would pick up yet another first down and more. Our defense just couldn't seem to get off the field on third downs as they would give up another conversion here. And the Bulls now found themselves inside our 15 yard line as Ogbonna would roll out of the pocket. He would step up and take this into the end zone. They of course would have no problem knocking home an extra point and so now we found ourselves down by one to the Bulls here with under two minutes to go. We needed to see if Ethan Hampton could get our offense down the field and score to take the lead back before halftime and he was doing an excellent job for us so far as we were moving the ball quickly and efficiently. On third and two he would go back to Kyle Thomas on the shovel pitch for another touchdown as that play has been working wonders for us in the red zone all season but our defense would give up a touchdown right before halftime here and things were not looking good for us headed into the second half. To make things worse, the Bulls had the ball to start the second half as well today. And just like in the first half, our defense couldn't seem to get off the field on third down against their offense. Finally, after making it down to our 25, we'd get a stop, and the Bulls would send out the field goal unit, and it would miss right, but we would commit a roughing the kicker penalty, and that would give them a fresh set of downs, but we would pick up another third down stop, and this time, they'd miss the field goal with no penalty. That was such a lucky stop by our defense, as now we had a chance to take the lead back over Buffalo on what would be a crucial drive and we needed to pick up this third and seven as we were just out of field goal range and we would do just that as Ethan Hampton would then find Andrew McElroy for the touchdown and we had taken the lead right back over Buffalo but still could not get any third down stops but at least had the lead headed into the fourth. The Bulls were getting close to the red zone and we needed to get this stop as they would be going for it here on fourth and five and Obama's pass would be knocked incomplete as we had gotten the fourth down stop and all we needed to do was run out the clock now. A crucial third and five as we weren't even past midfield yet and thankfully Grayson Barnes would pick it up and Ontario Brown was going to be our workhorse this drive as we look to run the clock out. Another crucial third down for the Huskies here but we wouldn't pick it up and Coach Brooks made the decision to send the field goal unit out instead of going for it. I have no idea what went into that decision but that now gave Buffalo new life in this game. Thankfully the defense would come up with a third down stop, Elbana would go deep and it would be knocked in complete as the Huskies defense came up with another big time fourth down stop for them and now just needed to run out the clock. Again though I have no idea what coach Brooks was doing as kneeling it on third and goal would mean they'd have to kick a field goal. That left just enough time for Buffalo to get a couple plays off and on third and ten this would be their last chance as Ogbonna would throw it up deep down to the 20 knocked in complete and the Huskies would barely walk away with this one as Ethan Hampton looked great today helping his team get the victory, throwing for over 230 yards, four touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Not only did that win land us one star right outside linebacker Kalen Tam, it helped us land our number two recruit on the board, three-star receiver DeMarco Vernon, and it also helped us land our top recruit on our board, three-star quarterback Nick Yeast from Chicago. Recruiting wasn't done though, as next episode we had Mitch Kuma on a visit to DeKalb in week six, along with defensive tackle Stephen Morton and three-star right tackle Shakir Count. But before week six, we had to deal with another tough road matchup next episode going up against our former coach Dave Dorn at NC State.